Hey guys, it is great to be back with you again for another episode of Sob Talk Live. Mark Romisher and I were live on YouTube mm -hmm. and Facebook just about every Thursday evening telling stories just for mm -hmm. the Sob community. So I'm really glad you're here. Absolutely. As always, we're trying to keep the enthusiasm going and keep those sobs on the road. And we're going to be going over a couple of things tonight. We're going to be talking about um, some maintenance things we want to look at because the season's right around the corner to keep our sobs maintenance. Also, we're we'll going to be talking to a uh, pretty pretty well-known YouTuber with yep. the sob community here. We're going to be talking with him a little bit. Uh, but before we get to all that, uh, something caught your eye, Lee, on Facebook recently. Can you share that with us? Yeah, okay, so I just was banging around on Facebook a little bit today, and uh, you know when you you pack up and you're going to move, there's always a lot of crap you have to deal with, right? It's a big Ooh, ordeal, absolutely. but when you have about 20 different cars, well, that becomes mm -hmm. a bigger challenge, and yeah. this is the solution that Scott Winna came up with, so if you... Ooh. <laughs> you follow the the uh, Facebook group at all? You you probably see Scott on there from time to time. He's done just a tremendous amount of work. So th this is just part of his collection that he is packing up and moving to Florida. And I just had never seen a trailer full of sobs before. So this is kind of cool. He's got some interesting hardware here. So in the middle, uh, on the lower level, there is an 0495 wagon. It's a five speed. Mm -hmm. One of uh, he says 108 imported that year. Just ahead of mm -hmm. that is a, a 9,000. Ahead of that is an 84900 uh, eight-valve mm -hmm. turbo that he says the body is really rough, but the drivetrain is excellent, so he's keeping that mm -hmm. one. At the back there, you see that silver notch. It's a T5 oh, yeah. conversion car with the rebuilt trans that has a limited slip diff, so that's kind of nice. Oh, wow. Just above that is a um, another... Uh, T5 conversion. This car supposedly won um, People's Choice at one of the SOCs. And there are also a couple oh, nice. foreign cars up there. There's a Fox Body Mustang, but he says it's kind of special because mm -hmm. it's a 5.0 that's been unmolested. And right in the front there oh, is yeah. uh, an old Ford T Bird Super Coupe, a 90 Super Coupe. So that's a mm -hmm. turbocharged Ford. So not purely Saab, but a lot of Saabs. Mm -hmm. And I thought that is just pretty cool. So I wanted to give a little shout out to Scott and his collection relocating from Illinois to Michigan. So if you saw that on the road, that'd be a sight to see, wouldn't it? Woo, that's awesome, man. That's And I got to say that uh, if you, uh, as a sob enthusiast, you see that rolling on the road, you probably want to follow that truck and trying to find out who that is. <laughs> no kidding. Man, that looks like fun. But so no. uh, you've got some work to do. You've got work ahead of you as you're trying to get the car back on the road for spring, and you bumped yeah. into a couple little headaches. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, so, you know, the, the season is upon us. You know, mm -hmm. uh, springtime is coming. we got the car season getting ready to ramp up. And, of course, any time we get into spring and summer, Saab owners want to go ahead and get their cars ready, you know. There's maintenance things we want to do. We want to get the oil changed. We want to get the fluids checked. You know, we want to make sure, you know, have the tires in good shape, the suspension, you know, all the typical sob things that uh, us owners go through. But what I found recently is that I am having trouble trying to get a hold of some of the items for the maintenance. And mainly the problem I'm having is oil. Now, I happen to use Rotella T6 full, syn full synthetic oil and uh, of the 5W40 variety. And this oil, I've been using this since I've been a Saab owner from the beginning in 2017. And this was presented to me from one of my friends. Mm -hmm. And the reason I use this oil is that it is uh, full of the proper additives for actual diesel engines. Mm -hmm. And what the great part about that is, is that diesel engines are very high temperature, harsh environments, and they have turbochargers that just take a beating. Our sobs are not too much different. Our engines do run warm, and the, the turbos definitely uh, are very well used in our vehicles. So the additives and the formulation of this oil works very well, and I've had a really good experience with it. However, I actually had a conversation with a couple individuals in some local shops, yeah. and they're talking about how the supply chain issue is of the additives that they're trying to find for this oil. And that's really what makes the oil um, outstanding to protect all those vital parts. And uh, so obviously, if there's less oil to go around, prices have gone up. And uh, I was looking online, and we've seen prices uh, double three or four times in some cases on this oil. So back when the oil was regularly available, I could go into a local Walmart or an auto parts store and probably pick up a four, a four quart uh, jug of it for about, you know, $21, $22. Um, 
but now um, I am having trouble finding uh, the same gallon jug of oil for less than seventy or eighty dollars in some cases. Oh, man. And for for us who have the sobs of the four cylinders, um, you know, whether they be a, a nine five or nine three, typically it's going to be you know between four and five quarts. So one jug is enough. So I'm still going to be looking at two jugs there, and they do sell a ten quart jug, but that. I saw the price on the ten quart uh, jug recently, and that's that's going for about a hundred and eighty dollars. And it's just, I never imagined that an oil change would cost me that much. And that's not even with the filter. I mean, uh, by the time you get a a good quality filter, you're fairly close to two hundred dollars, and that's just parts. <laughs> As if you do it in your garage, up on your jack stands <laughs> and the ramps. Um, so. Really, that's something to look out for because the supply chain issues are affecting us sob owners directly in that mm -hmm. one fashion. Um, you know, I looked around online, Mark, after you told me about that, and there are a lot mm -hmm. of guys talking about this. They're saying, you know, I can't get this Rotella. T, you said mm -hmm. that's the T6? T6, yeah. yeah, yeah that's they're right. saying they just can't find it. It's just not in the store, or you go online and there's one available, that kind of thing. So, yeah, right. it seems like that's a big issue. Yeah, and that's just uh, oil. Thankfully, um, other fluids uh, seem to be uh, not as problematic. But mm -hmm. as far as uh, as far as the fluids go, you know, like like we see in this picture here, um, you know, brake fluid uh, price on that has been decent. Um, the uh, the pentosin uh, fluids, you know, for the power steering and the convertible tops, which I happen to have a, a spare a spare containers of those. Thankfully, uh, um, I have those on hand, but you know, heaven forbid, you, it's get hard to find some of these things. And if you have maintenance items, just trying to keep up with standard stuff because we're trying to keep the solves on the road. Uh, it's it's becoming more challenging every day, yeah. especially with everything that's happening in the world, unfortunately. Well, uh, let's let's press ahead and uh, introduce mm -hmm. folks to Jacob Pretzman, and he mm -hmm. is uh, he's a guy who does. Quite a lot of work on getting uh, younger people into the Saab game. He is the host of the Auto Autopsy YouTube channel. And uh, mm -hmm. I snooped this guy out and uh, checked some of the stats because, you know, I've got a little YouTube channel of my own. You know, it's nowhere near where Jacob's at, though. <laughs> uh, you know, he's got over 21 million views and 576 videos posted. Mm -hmm. And he's dealing mostly, you know, I'm solely 900 stuff, old C900 stuff, and he's in the newer generation. And, and that's why Mark and I wanted to connect with him to find out more about talking to younger people about getting into Saab. So we Absolutely. recorded this interview the other day. He couldn't be with us live because of his work schedule, but uh, take a listen as, as he kind of explains what his mission was and exactly why he wanted to start doing a Saab YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. When I first started it, my, my goal wasn't to just do Saab content specifically, but I realized mm -hmm. as I started to make more videos that, well, this 9.3 is the car I have, so this is kind of what I want to make videos on. So when I mm -hmm. first started, there wasn't, I mean, I guess you could say there was a little bit of inspiration from a couple of YouTubers I watched. I remember one that I used to watch a lot was uh, Vehicle Virgins. Um, so he was mm -hmm. kind of the big one I took a lot of inspiration from, but mm -hmm. I kind of morphed it into my own thing pretty quickly when it came to just doing a ton of content on, uh, on Sobs. So. So the car that uh, really I think most people know you for is your uh, sexy Turbo X. There's something special about this car. What what makes it so so uh, so special in the Saab world? So the Turbo X. Um, after I got into Saabs, where I made you know a, a year worth of videos on my on my four cylinder nine three, which I still have. I I kind of started to learn more about the Turbo X, what it was, what it stood for. It was you know made to celebrate 30 years of turbocharging sobs that was the where the name turbo came for and then the x of course stood for cross wheel drive which was the uh, new drivetrain system that saab debuted with this car um you know it came with a lot of unique features like special wheels a, a little bit of a body kit carbon fiber trim special exhaust all these little things and it was just kind of a very limited run car that i always kind of saw as my uh, dream saab per se so i finally found one in massachusetts um, flew out there, picked it up, and uh, yeah, had it for about three, three and a half years, I think. Mm -hmm. So that car, uh, I think there were about 600 of them brought into the United States. And was it about 300 horsepower? 
Yeah, they were, I think, around 280 stock and around 300 foot-pounds of torque. Um, mine, you know, I did a, a few modifications to it and uh, some tuning and things like that. So it pushed up the power a little bit. But it's definitely a, a quick car from, from factory. It's, it's fun. Yeah. So it's the car that made you. Why'd you sell it? So... I don't want to say the reason I sold it was because of the issue I had with the steering rack. I had an issue where the car would shake side to side when I when I would corner hard. The whole car would would shake, and it was you know almost dangerous. And my alignment kept get kept getting thrown thrown out. Um, I replaced just about everything suspension wise. I took it to our Saab shop here in Phoenix, and they they couldn't even mm -hmm. figure it out. And then finally, I took it back there about a third time. And they're fine. They finally figured out that there was some play in the steering rack, so they replaced the steering rack. And by then, I had just dumped a lot more money into it, and I was kind of like, you know, this car's getting up there in mileage. Um, do I really want to continue to possibly put more money into this, or could I, you know, explore something different? Could I try something newer that's not a Saab with less miles, possibly still has a factory warranty on it, and you know, maybe try making videos on that as well, and just just experience something else because I'm I'm still relatively young, so. You know, I bought my first 9.3 when I graduated high school, and that was kind of my first car. So mm -hmm. uh, I hadn't really experienced anything outside of Saab except for my Miata that I had briefly for a couple of years. So we're, we're going to leave that one there as a teaser. We'll we'll introduce people who haven't been to your channel to what you're driving these days, you traitor. Uh, <laughs> I still have a Saab. So. <laughs> you do indeed. So yeah, and I just saw you do some really cool stuff. Here's your 9.3. Um, and you just put a whole new suspension on this thing. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I bought this car, uh, like I just said, I bought it when I graduated high school. Um, so about six years ago almost now, I've dr driven it over 50,000 miles. And this thing has really been kind of the backbone of the channel as much as the Turbo X was. Um, you know, just doing so many modifications to it, people, you know, seeing those modifications or the, the repairs I do on it. I mean, I fixed probably half a dozen oil leaks or coolant leaks on it and, you know, mm -hmm. just basic maintenance videos, installing things like that ECU spacer kit I did or the Apple mm -hmm. CarPlay ICM3, the new suspension mm -hmm. you just showed, you know, yep. tuning it with map tune, all these other things. And, you know, I, I so I, I love that car. You know, I even went as far as putting an aero kit on it, different wheels, aero brakes, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, of course, did a full respray, re excuse me, about a year and a half ago. So, that car's definitely had a lot of money put into it, but um, I love it a ton. No plans to ever sell it. So, uh, yeah, it's been it's been fantastic for me. Knock on wood, still driving strong after 163,000 miles now. So, oh, cool. That's awesome. And the great part is, is that's your first car. That's your first car out of high school, which... The funny part is that you're one of many newer and younger generation of drivers who are able to actually experience that. And I get it while you have your first car. You know, I still have my first Saab. It's always going to hold a special place in my heart. So I definitely relate to keeping that first Saab. Um, and uh, it, it's funny. Um, I think a lot of other people can draw upon your example as you inspire the younger generations, inspire younger drivers, say, hey, you know, I got this car out of high school. I enjoy it so much. I want to basically share my experiences through my platform and be able to share the joy and enthusiasm with other younger people out there and maybe help them experience the same joy and same enthusiasm. And I think that's really a, a good message that we're uh, trying to help put out there and keep the uh, you know, community alive. So definitely want to point that out. I, I think increasingly especially i'm sure you, you both have noticed this as well increasingly the last two or three years especially there's been a huge influx of younger mm -hmm. uh sob owners you know whether they're yeah. in high school college just young adults generally speaking that are buying these mm -hmm. cars you know i think a big reason is just because they're so cheap they're turbo cars but as mm -hmm. they buy these cars and you know maybe they join some facebook groups or they might happen to see some of my videos i don't want to take credit for any of this of course but <laughs> They might see some videos or they might see, wow, this these cars are actually pretty cool. They have all these little like quirks and things about them mm -hmm. that make them unique. It's got leather seats, it's a pretty luxurious car, and it's pretty fun to drive from factory. So but I definitely think that the demographic of Saab owners is is really changed over the last five years or so. Yeah, it certainly it, it is changing and
You know, I do think you're kind of an inspiration, all the work we just saw you doing on on that suspension. And, uh, you know, I have to admit, Mark and I are both kind of jealous. After you got that map tune suspension on, lowered the car, and then you got to go out and have a little bit of fun on some cool roads in Arizona. Let's take a look and listen to that. All right, let's kick her in the manual mode. Okay, I got to tell you, man, um, you know, I live around a bunch of cornfields. There's no place that I'm going to go have that much fun. <laughs> yeah, Phoenix and, is a grid for the most part, but there's a couple spots, you know, uh, that one is at South Mountain in particular. We've got some good roads if you know where to go. So it's it's a perfect time of year to do that kind of stuff, too, before it gets too hot. So, And, and I'd like to go in and ask a question. You've had an opportunity to have a regular 9.3 and a Turbo X. What can you tell us about the experience between those two vehicles, especially with the work you put into your 9.3 as your first car? So I think, you know, I, I've, I made a video in the past actually discussing kind of the, uh, the differences between, not necessarily the, the, my, my 9.3 arc and the Turbo X, but the 2.0 and the 2.8 motor and mm -hmm. um, what benefits are to each of them. And, you know, so I think, what I always tell people when they're asking what they should look for in a 9.3, I always tell them it depends on what you want. If you're looking for a car that you want a reliable daily driver, you're just trying to get good gas mileage, um, you, you know, you want something that's quick and fun, which is probably part of the reason why you're buying a Saab to begin with, but you don't necessarily care about performance a ton. You don't plan on doing a ton of modifications, and I think the four-cylinder 9.3 is your option. If you're looking for a car specifically for performance, you don't really care about gas mileage as much. The V6 is a little bit harder to work on. Um, I'd say reliability-wise, in my experience, they're about the same. Um, mm. So I think it really depends on, on what you're looking for. So the V6 has much more potential when it comes to modifications, but it's going to suffer in the gas mileage department um, and, you know, mm -hmm. little things like that. So. Well, that is very cool. So uh, out there in Phoenix, uh, you have the Saab Club of Arizona is pretty active and you guys uh, got together recently. And as we were talking about earlier, one of the cool things that's happening in Saab world these days is younger guys are finding these cars and doing some cool things with it. And you showed us that at, at the Saab Club meet just recently. Let me share that with folks. Orange, they got the coilovers on there now, BBS wheels with some amazing fitment, and uh, six-speed manual, too, of course. The roof is wrapped black, so it's got a really slick look to it. The spoiler is black. A couple little details are black. So this is a really slick car. Uh, this is Jeffrey's Turbo X. So he actually almost bought my Turbo X. Um, he ended up buying one in Chicago, I think it was. Uh, this is a six speed manual um nav all that it's pretty much a fully loaded car so this is really really clean you guys have seen lucas's car a few times this is his t5 uh 93 hatch uh he actually just finished putting the uh vegan body kit on here he has the side skirts and the uh, rear bumper now up front here he's actually doing something different uh he's got a certain special lip he's gonna put on it but just put a green valve cover on here Dion just pulled up with his 9.3 aero convertible. Um, there's Eric's 9.3 six-speed manual, 9.3 aero as well. Got another six-speed 9.3. This car actually used to be up in northern Arizona. Lucas and I went up there, put a new sim in it. Lucas did a new clutch in this car as well. They just put some new suspension in now too, and this thing's awesome. 96 900 convertible. It's a perfect day to have a uh, convertible out. Um, yeah, when is it not in Phoenix, right? And then you went out for a drive with all these Saabs. So what a great, what a great turnout. How big is the Saab Club of Arizona? So people always tell me like, wow, you have such a great active Saab Club out there. There must be so many Saabs out in, out in Arizona. And we really have very few Saabs out here, but we're lucky enough to have, you know, the Saabs that we do have, a lot of them are enthusiasts. Um, so I, I, th I think our, our Facebook page actually just crossed a thousand members, which I, I'm very proud of. Um, 
I've been, you know, in that for, for about four or five years now. But this this cruise we put together about two days beforehand, so it was very short notice. And we had some people drive out from Yuma, which was about three hours away. Um, we had about 15 or 16 subs total, which was pretty great. And uh, when we do our awesome. more formal, like, uh, semi-annual meets, those will, you know, get up to 60 cars almost, which is pretty awesome, I think. Uh, there's always new faces out as well as the normal group of guys that I, you know, I've known for a while now that are always helping me out with my car and now and then if i can provide any sort of help to them i will but uh it's just a really great like close tight-knit community and i i really do like our our arizona club that's cool and that brings up another point i'd like to also and we've talked about this on the show before it's all about the community and uh ever since you got into sobs um have you had the same experience? So you, what what has the community done done with you and helped your involvement in, in, in sharing the Saab joy and enthusiasm? I mean, the Saab community is by far, you know, I haven't been a part of too many other car communities per se yet, but mm -hmm. I'm, I've been blown away by how helpful the Saab community is. I mean, you'll post something in, in a Facebook group and say, hey, here's what's wrong with my car. And nine times out of 10, you'll get a good answer back. Um, and I think, you know, there, there are certain guys out there that stand out as well. I mean, guys that if I'm helping someone locally with Tech 2 stuff on their car and I can't figure it out, like Richard Dilbar, I'm sure most of you know, um, I was helping someone with a bad ignition switch the other day. And he took the time to FaceTime me for like 15 minutes out of his Sunday night to, to help me try and diagnose the problem. Anthony Farah is helping me all the time with, with questions when I, when I can't figure mm -hmm. stuff out and... Uh, you know that people outside the Saab community as well, and or outside of Arizona, I should say, are, are always very mm -hmm. helpful. So there's there's definitely a uh, a lot of you know I'd say um, cornerstone members in the sense that are uh, always willing to provide input and help and know so much about these cars. Yeah, and um, you know I I, I the, one of the things that I like about running my YouTube channel and of course doing Saab Talk Live is hearing from people around the world. And the questions people ask, uh, it's just amazing uh, what guys are doing with their cars. You've done a lot with your cars, all the projects that you've done. What do you think has been an improvement that was worthwhile and, and what was really kind of eh, not worth the money, not worth the effort? So I'd say probably the best bang for your buck modification I've done to, to any of my cars is a tune. A tune is probably the best thing you can do to just get power right out of the box, whether it's just a stage one to give you another 40, 50 horsepower, or you do an exhaust and intercooler and you decide now I want more power and then you can go to something like a stage three and get even, uh, you know, a few extra horsepower. So um, I'd say a tune number one, second would be an exhaust. Um, I always tell people to be careful with the uh, with the Ecotechs because when you straight pipe them, they tend to sound like Civics. Um, <laughs> so I, I learned that the hard way on mine when I was uh, younger in, in college. Um, I, I quickly changed that, threw a muffler back on it. But um, <laughs> I, I'd say, you know, outside of that, an intercooler is probably the, the biggest, you know, especially out here in the heat. The DO88 yeah. intercooler, I had mm -hmm. that on my Turbo X. I also put one on my, uh, my other 93 I still have, and those amazing quality products, very well built, and uh, they perform amazing as well. Um, in terms of something that's disappointed me, honestly, I'm not sure there's any mods that I have really done that have been disappointments. Um, I'm usually pretty good about doing research beforehand. I always advise people to do research beforehand as well. I guess one thing I could say I was a bit disappointed on was I bought a, uh, a used BSR intake from a friend for like 20 bucks, just a cheap plastic intake. I always, you know, I don't like to talk bad on companies or anything like that, but um, I, I always recommend DO88 over BSR just because their quality is far superior. And uh, that kept giving me math codes because there was a very slight crack in it, no matter what I did to fix it, um, even, you know, replacing the filter, things like that, just couldn't get rid of that code. So I ended up getting rid of that intake, but that was kind of like a $20 shot in the dark anyways. So, you know, it was kind of had low expectations for it to begin with, but yeah. overall I'd say there really hasn't been a mod that has been disappointing necessarily. So knock on wood, I don't come across any that I do soon. That will, uh, I will change my, uh, my answer to that. So, 
Well, you are you are undergoing a change on your channel right now. There's there's a new uh, car in the stable, and I kind of hinted earlier that you went off the reservation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, so I ended up so like, like, like we talked about earlier, I, uh, I I finally decided to sell the Turbo X. Um, I wanted something newer, less miles, something that was still fun and engaging. So I ended up test driving about half a dozen cars. One of them being the Audi S3. Um, I also looked at like the Julia, which you know I would have loved to have gotten a Julia, but a lot of them just seemed to be lemons or buybacks, mm -hmm. or they were just they wouldn't be any more they, they wouldn't be a reliable car or a safe bet to buy really as as much as I hated to say it. Um, looked at uh, what else did I look at? Um, I looked at a BMW 340i, even though I knew I wouldn't want that just to see what it was like. Test drove a Golf R as well, which is basically the same thing as an S3 and. Uh, a Volvo S60, I looked at that one too, but it wasn't really sporty. I still wanted something that was sporty, so that's why I went with the S3. It's uh, so much fun to drive. It has all the tech I could ever dream of, and it's a 2017, but it still feels like a brand new car. So I absolutely, uh, absolutely love it so far. Um, a lot of people were definitely kind of uh, upset that I sold the car, um, the Turbo X, but it was at a point where I'd made, I think, over 80 videos on that car, so I kind of figured... Uh, you know, there wasn't really much content wise I could continue to do on that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd kind of done everything from maintenance and repairs to all the modifications. You know, there weren't really much more modifications I could do on there. Um, so mm -hmm. content wise, I don't want to say that's the reason I sold it, but there weren't really many more videos I, I could have done on that car, even if I wanted to. So, so I think, you know, that that's, you know, at least that's what, what I have been trying to tell people to help, uh, provide a better rationale for why I sold it. But really, I, j I wanted something newer with less miles that I could count on to get me from A to B, you know, without without any concerns. So, <laughs> so I kind of wanted to ask you, since you owned a Turbo X and now you're into the S3, um, refresh my memory, the S3, does it have the all-wheel drive, the Quattro uh, drive train? Yeah so, yeah, so interestingly enough, it's Quattro, but it's technically a Haldex system. So I think it's just mm -hmm. a newer version of what was in the Turbo X, oddly enough, mm -hmm. except it's a little bit more rear-wheel drive bias. Uh, the motor's mm -hmm. still, you know, front-wheel drive based, but um, mm -hmm. it's 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 great. I, I really like the, uh, the drivetrain in that. Yeah. And for comparison, I'm just curious for our viewers, how would you compare the Turbo X all-wheel drive to the Audi all-wheel drive. Is, is there some differences there you can point out for us? So I've actually gotten a few requests from, from some people to make a video kind of comparing the two cars. So I think at mm -hmm. some point I'm going to do that once I can, you know, put some more thoughts together and, uh, okay. you know, get a whole video worth of, uh, of content into that. But, um, mm -hmm. I think from a, from a drivetrain standpoint, the, uh, the S3 is about 300 pounds lighter. So it definitely takes turns a little bit better. Um, the steering, mm -hmm. you know, it's electric power steering, so it depends on the drive mode. So when, when you're in dynamic mode or the sporty mode, it definitely tightens up a little bit more than the Turbo X would feel. But the steering on the Turbo X is still fantastic. It handles so well. The Turbo X definitely has that great low-end torque that you get from the 2.8s, which I absolutely loved. Um, mm -hmm. But really the big thing about the S3 that just, you know, that the Turbo X can't compete with is all the uh, modern amenities and, and features, mm -hmm. which I, I hate to say, it just kind of uh, really dates the Saab, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. you know, I, I still love driving my, my 2.0 and uh, it's it's a great car, but when I'm just looking for all the modern features and stuff like that, it's uh, mm -hmm. not necessarily the car to go to. But Yeah, hard to argue with modern, right? That's That's tough. And uh, gosh, this is going to break some hearts, but uh, I'm going to tell people about your little mishap that you had. This this really bites. Uh, walk and us through this story. Probably about a 30 foot RV trailer. Oh, let me turn the audio Came down. Came around a this way. He took the turn too sharp, and I kind of was saw. I kind of saw it out of the corner of my eye. Like I saw him like get really close. I'm like, uh, okay. He kept going, and sure enough, he caught the whole front corner of the car. Now. Oh man, that's a heartbreaker. <laughs> yeah, so I was uh, about two weeks after I got the car, I decided to take it out to California for uh, you know just just to get on a little road trip, have some fun. And on my way back, I stopped in Yuma, which is a halfway point. I parked at that corner pump, and mid fill up, I was you know 
gas pump was in the car. I was, I think I was t sending someone a text or something real quick and I saw something out of the corner of my eye. Sure enough, there's a guy in a trailer that just takes the turn too sharp and just completely caught the whole front corner of the car. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I said this in that, in that video, but I, I want to repeat it here again. I think at the end of the day though, um, assuming, you know, I can get everything sorted with insurance, which is currently being difficult. Um, I think I would have rather had this happen to this car because if this had happened to my 9.3, they probably would have totaled it out and I would have had to deal with buying it yeah. back from insurance, yeah. having a salvage title, all this other stuff. So at least yeah. the Audi is, uh, you know, still going to hopefully, uh, it should be at least getting repaired to uh, its former glory. So, yeah, but it's definitely, I, definitely something that really, you know, kind of uh, it was very, very upsetting at the time. <laughs> I'm sure. That, to say the least. <laughs> And just for educational purposes, what year is your Audi, by the way? It's a 2017. 2017. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful car. It's it's lovely. Thank I you. get it. I get it. You can't be all sob all day. I understand. <laughs> yep. Oh, I, I love it. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I might get people uh, messaging me now. I'm going to say this, but I've, I've kind of been asking, you know, a couple friends locally, like, hey, if you see a good sob project locally, send it to me. You know, I might... You know, so maybe sometime soon, you know, I don't know how soon, if there's a right project that pops up, I might pick it up and, you know, kind of do what I did with my uh, 95 wagon that I had and uh, mm -hmm. do some videos on that, fix it up and then sell it. So we'll see. All right, guys. So there you go. The, uh, the word is out. Jacob might be looking for another sub project. So if you got anything in mind, uh, you know how to find him, right? Auto Autopsy on YouTube. That's the name of his channel. What a nice guy, Mark. Absolutely. Uh, I met Jacob uh, through a couple of Saab Owners Conventions now, and it's been a pleasure talking with him. And it's it's great to have uh, known him so far, and I'm looking forward to uh, uh, seeing, uh, seeing him in the future, obviously. But uh, he's he's bringing the younger generation to Saab, which is great. And that's and that's what I've been, uh, you know, hinting at keeping the Saab brand alive is, is bringing the younger people in. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, keeping the enthusiasm and keeping the joy alive, that's that's the biggest part. I love that, Steve Skelton. The Audi is expendable. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> you know, I'll tell you Thanks, one thing Steve. that... One thing that uh, tells you how smart Jacob is, I don't know if, if you were listening close, you heard him say, I looked at a BMW, but I knew I wasn't going to buy it. So yeah, that tells you just how smart that young kid is, right? Absolutely. Um, but, uh, oh, I did want to answer a question from Shane Mulcahy earlier. Um, my first vehicle was and is a 2004 95 ARC that I have uh, named Chili because it's the chili red uh, pink color. So that's my daily driver. And that's uh that's the sub I'm depending on for all my daily tasks right now. Well, we're going to leave it there, guys. So glad that you joined us. And uh, we're going to be off for the next couple of weeks. Travel is going to keep mm -hmm. us out of the studio, so we can't pull that together. But I think April mm -hmm. 21st or so should be the first time back and working on some uh, good topics for you then. So I hope that we'll see you there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Mark, get out in the garage and get that oil changed, will you? The summer's coming. You're going to have to get that car on the road. <laughs> I know. Uh, hopefully I have enough uh, leftovers in the oil bottles I have in the garage that I can get an oil change with those guys, but uh, I kind of doubt it. So uh, I think, um, unfortunately, this next maintenance trip may hurt my pocketbook more than it has most of the time. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, guys. We will see you next time around and uh, check us out on YouTube and Facebook every mm -hmm. Thursday, sort of also almost every Thursday at 8 o'clock. We hope we'll see you the next time around. Take care. All right. Have a great time, guys. Mm -hmm.